Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Today's gonna be a bit of a longer format. I wanna try this out. Um, I am actually not able to do a live stream today because um, I'll, I'll give you a personal update in a second, then you'll uh, understand why. Uh, so I wanted to do a long format where I'm gonna raise a couple of topics. We're gonna discuss them. I'm gonna give you a personal update first, then I'm gonna talk about some recent paintings and auctions upcoming. Uh, then we're gonna talk about a few questions I received recently that I think are worth diving into and one last interesting question. So stay tuned for that. A bit of a deeper one, but I think it's gonna be a good kind of topic. This is probably gonna be published as a, pr as a um, what do you call that kind of a thing? Uh, premiere okay on YouTube. So let's get started. Personal update. Uh, as some of you know, I had a bit of a knee injury. I dislocated my patella, which sucks. It actually happened to me twice when I was about 17 or 16, 18, something around there. Um, and then 15 years, I survived without it happening again. But then in the late, one of the latest uh, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu workouts, I dislocated it. I did a wrong kind of movement <clears throat> a bit of it at an angle. Uh, I didn't do the technique properly. I now understand why, but also this is an issue I have because uh, it happened before, of course. Um, so it's a, a lot of uh, rehab, physiotherapy, just resting. It's been a little tiring. Uh, so that's one thing. Then we have an upcoming uh, vacation to Vietnam at the end of August. This is actually something we have uh, postponed all the way back from 2019 due to COVID and all of that. Our initial... Um, uh, f f flight tickets were with Aeroflot, Russian company, cannot use these obviously now, uh, so we had to uh, re repurchase the flight, we have a voucher from them that we cannot use anyway, so I don't know if we'll ever see that money again, uh, but anyway, we postponed it, postone postponed it, and now was a good time, so we'll do that, um, so I have a few arrangements and errands to do for that, today, which is why I'm not doing this live stream. My apologies. So that's for a kind of personal update about the knee, by the way. Don't worry, slowly it's going to be okay. I can walk kind of limp and start to gain more range of movement. It's a really annoying injury, honestly, to heal from. Um, it was really painful in the beginning, and I just hate the fact that I can't move freely. You know, it's one of these things you only appreciate uh, when it's gone for a while. Um, and some people, unfortunately, it can go permanently. So, yeah, we'll see about that. I may actually need sur very light surgery, but it's not urgent in the future. Not going to dive into too much into the medical stuff. It's boring. But, yeah, that's where it is. I'm going to survive. Uh, but let's talk about, about a few recent paintings. One of them I will dive deeper into. Um, actually, let's switch over to here. Um, I would like to start with... Um, uh, this one. So we talked about this one. You've seen it. Now, the reason I'm showing you some of these paintings is because I was in contact with a an auction house here, a local auction house that does a really good job selling paintings, and they have a pretty strong reputation, uh, as far as I know. And I will be auctioning with them some paintings, some of which you can see here, some you can't. But I just wanted to show you some of these. This one is going to be there too, by the way. I call it The Boss, uh, which I really, really like. Some of you may have seen it. Now, I want to go back for a second to this one, the cactus painting, because this was an interesting one. I did talk about it on Tuesday's video. Um, the thing is, like, because of the knee, it was very uncomfortable to sit at my painting uh, position for a long time. So it forced me to do shorter um, shorter sittings. Um, and, and so the solution I found to that was to do quick, thin glazes and work in stages because I had to take breaks and raise my, my foot, basically. Otherwise, it would start to hurt. Um, and what it led to is, I think, a process with a lot of interesting nuanced colors. I talked about it on the Instagram post. I talked about it in Tuesday's video. This... Um, act of glazing thin layers uh, one over the other, um, it's interesting. It, it can really build a richness of color there. Uh, my cactus is much lighter than the one in the in the photo because I wanted it all to pop against the background. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this painting. There's, there's a lot that could be improved too, but especially in the weird kind of details around to the sides. But I actually feel like this is a, this was a great stepping stone to me, not because now I use thinner glazes, but because I pretty much utilized whatever I saw fit at the moment. And that's another step of re-realizing re that it really isn't about technique, but it is about 
the instinct once you you just have a basic knowledge of the med- basic understanding of the medium. We'll talk a bit about that later on. But in any case, yeah, very proud of this one. Lots of cool details, small details, shadows next to highlights, a lot of patterns that I really, really like. Uh, then we had this one, the boss. This is based on a photo I took years ago. I think it was in 2017, probably maybe even 2016. I'm not sure. Just a local kind of cafe chain. Um, it was in Tel Aviv. And I'm just so proud I took this photo. It was such a good one because she was really running the place um, and that pose and everything with the hand reaching out. So that was really good. Um, and then we have this one. So I'm showing you this. This is an old one from, you know, old 2019. I don't remember exactly when, 2018. Uh, this one's going to go on auction two. It's going to be interesting to see what these will do. I'm, I don't expect too high prices compared to, let's say, something I sell directly. Um, just because I'm I'm building, so my my whole okay I'm gonna dive deeper on that. Uh, the whole goal here is to start building uh, an audience here locally too, because everything I've been doing so far has been you know online and worldwide. But there is a a market here uh, locally for art collectors, and I would like to bring more watercolor into that world if I can, and start getting my feet wet if that makes sense in the local market. Um, and that's kind of the first step. And a part Part of it is, you know, sometimes when you start with a new market, the pricing may change. A lot of things may change. The format may change. Just as you're building, it's it's a marketing tool basically to to help the art find uh, its collectors. And then once you um, have a name in that local specific market, then you can start increasing prices and you know all of that. And it's interesting to let the audience, the 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 customer base, price the work. So I'm I'm actually really interested to see what these will do. I will keep you updated if there's going to be anything interesting. Uh, but yeah, this one um, I call it scaffolding. This is a, another painting I did. Uh, maybe three years ago, two years ago. <clears throat> I really enjoyed painting this one with the that little transparent cloth tarp there over the building. Some of you probably remember this one. Um, very proud of it. These are some paintings I didn't even plan on selling. Uh, this one too. I didn't really plan on selling it right now or anything like that. So it was great. Um, it was honestly great just to be able to uh, put them for sale and let someone else almost take care of that process for me, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, very happy about that. I love this painting. It's a small one too. Uh, I really, really like this one. Uh, and then uh, Shingles is going to be there too. Um, so quite happy about that as well. R- really tiny one. Uh, it's going to be interesting. So that is for uh, the recent paintings uh, and auctions. Um, I just want, I have so many paintings here. It's just time to sell a lot of them. So I'm going to put more focus on that. Uh, now let's uh, switch gears here. I want to talk about a few questions I received. Um, this is interesting. It's going to get a little philosophical, but you know, I get a lot of questions about my approach and that makes sense because I teach watercolor in a way I, I, you know, I demonstrate how I paint. I try to keep it very light touch, meaning I, I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't want to tell you that one way is right and another way is wrong because it just does not work that way. Um, So the thing is, you know, I get a lot of questions that ask and a lot of these questions sound like, would it help to do blah, blah, blah? Would it help to mix more paint in advance to, you know, all of these things? Uh, Or would it be better to first paint whatever the background then the foreground, first paint the darks, then the lights? You know, all of these questions. And if you notice the phrasing, right, would it help to... Uh, would it be better to, uh, better compared to what? Help what? What are you trying to help, you know? What do people try to help in their art? When I think about helping myself make better art, or or the word helping my art, I find it really um, uninspiring, you know? I'm not trying to make my art even better necessarily. Um, I, if anything try to almost remove myself from the art making process and to just be the person observing the art being created, if that makes sense. I'm gonna increase the fan speed here. Um, So, you know, if you're just trying to copy me based on a tutorial, which is perfectly fine, you know, Um, if you are just uh, doing this for fun, you enjoy the pure process of painting and seeing someone else's process helps you with that, sure, that's great. But if you're looking for anything beyond that, if you're looking, I think, for, you know, 
kind of carving your own path and finding your own truth of art, let's say. I don't, don't try to read too much into these words, but you probably know what I mean when you see artwork by someone and you're blown away, you've never seen anything like that. It's one of a kind. I put uh, John Singer Sargent's watercolors in that category. By the way, now if you look at contemporary artists, you'll see a lot of artists whose art just looks like other people's art. It's not a bad thing. My art can have that too. But if anything, I'm moving away from that. So if you're looking for anything like that, uh, true orig originality, making something that is truly the one thing that nothing else competes with, nothing else comes close to, nothing else looks like. If you're looking for that, following will not probably provide it. Okay? Now, here's what happens. Because this doesn't only happen in questions I get asked, it also happens in comments. So, artists create right? Um, and then people analyze. People could be uh, disciples or people who want to learn from. People can be art critics. People can be news people. It could be anyone, right? Uh, an artist makes the artwork, but then other people analyze, critique it, attach a meaning to it, and try to give it some kind of a significance or some kind of clarity. Now, the reality is that all of these interpretations, all of these uh, analysis that comes after the fact, all of the critique or criticism when someone tells you you should have done it that way instead of this way, should have done it this way instead of that way, it's all irrelevant because no one else is the person who made the art but you. You are the person from whom the art came and ar ar arrived, if that makes sense. The only person who knows, the only person who had any connection with the art is you. No one else is relevant, right? And if you look at it from the standpoint of learning from someone, anything I do on a pure analysis level of would it be better to do this, would it help to do that, is irrelevant for you. It really is. The one thing that is relevant to you, maybe two things I would say, one the inspiration you may gain from looking at my painting process or anyone else's painting process, because that inspiration, that's an emotion. Emotions are much clearer barometers for, you know, anything, pretty much, because you can't help but feel them. They just arise. So if you feel inspired, something, that's not me. That I, that, you know, you could say on a technical level, I inspired you or the painting process inspired you. The thing is, inspiration is not created by someone and then transferred onto someone else. Inspiration was created within you. That's the thing. And it's a very clear barometer that something um, resonated with you. And then you have this guide that tells you, oh, I really want to give this a try. That's as true as it gets, right? So if you're compelled to create, that's the truest thing. That's the most genuine thing. But... If you're thinking, how can I make my art better? There's no emotion behind it. There's no real value to it. It's just a thought. It's just a thought that's completely disconnected from the actual painting process, right? So if you're thinking about all of these things, or if you're thinking about how can I be as good as, all of these things take you away from the thing you already had, which is your own true originality. So beyond a very basic understanding of the medium, I would say all that is left is your vision. There's nothing else. Even when it comes to technical things, if you're asking me, okay, if you're asking, like the purest technical question you can ask is, what's the connection between water and paint? And then I can answer, very easy. More water leads to lighter paint or weaker paint. More paint leads to stronger paint. It's a ratio, right? You put more of this, you get more of that. You put more of that, you get more of this. And that's a very clear-cut thing, you know? Gravity, right? If you tilt the paper, you're going to change the direction where the paint moves. Anything beyond that, even should I paint this as dark as whatever, if I tell you what to do, that would be a lie. It will be a scam almost. 
Now, why is it a scam? Because how am I supposed to tell you, the person who's going to create the painting, the person who has the vision, how am I going to tell you how to do it? Because anything I will tell you will just move you away from your own vision that was already there from the moment you got started. So anything I, I, any advice I give, any tip I give in a way could be looked at as a scam. And what I mean by a scam is not I'm trying to scam you. It's just that it will not provide a benefit you think it will. The benefits some people think it will provide is I will be able to improve my art. I will get a better result. That's, it's more complex than that. Because the best result will be created if you truly just follow your vision, right? Now, people will naturally say, you know, is vision enough? Is that the only thing that, that one needs to make art? The answer to that is honestly yes. Now, understanding the medium to me is a must, but you make your own rules, right? I'm not going to tell you you have to learn the techniques because maybe a technique doesn't serve you. Maybe you don't need a technique, but you just need to observe what's going on on paper. Maybe, maybe you're that rare individual who just needs to look at the thing they want to create and just create it. And maybe that will give you the best result that looks like no one else's art. No one else will have a painting that looks like that. And you know what? When I look at John Singer Sargent's watercolors, that's what I feel. I feel like, you know, maybe he learned from someone, maybe he learned the ropes, the basics, but I feel like there is zero middleman between his vision and his creation at the end. There's nothing in between the two. And that's where the magic comes from, because when I look at his watercolors, they don't look really like anything else. Um, and... When you look at a lot of contemporary artists, their art does look like it fall into a certain stream. And again, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with following a certain stream. Nothing wrong with identifying with a label. I'm an impressionist. I'm a realist. I'm whatever. Nothing wrong with that. There's no right or wrong. There's no correct, no incorrect, no better, no helpful. None of that. The only question is, what are you trying to achieve? Where do you want to go? If you tell me, I want to make art that no one has ever seen before. I want people to look at my paintings and feel like this is the most original thing I ever have seen. Or if you want to tell me, I want to feel complete freedom in my process. I don't want to think about anything. I don't want to care about anything. I don't want to think about what other people will think about my result. All I want to do is just paint and be as free and and enjoy joyful and just do the process. Just be in the mode. Just be in the zen. If you tell me these things, you'll probably not find any true solution in techniques, in tutorials, in how-tos, in guides, in step-by-step -step plans and advice in anything. And even if I title the video watercolor advice, that's just because I, I need a way to get people to watch it, right? So I'm gonna tell you it's advice and then I'm gonna almost, almost slip the advice through without you noticing that the advice is don't take any advice, okay? Now again, for the purpose of inspiration, for the purpose of the bare minimum understanding of the medium, understanding cause and effect, these things can help. These things can help you. And when I say help in this context, I mean help you create your vision, make your vision come true. I'll give you a great example. At some point I figured something that was mind blown. I figured if you remember that video, uh, I don't know if you will, I remember exactly when I filmed it too. It was done in one shot, face and desk. Um, it was how when you do wet and wet, and while you move the brush, the paint won't bleed too much. But as soon as you lift it, it's going to spread out. So what ends up happening is if you want to have a controlled line of smooth transition, you just go with the brush in one go and you don't stop. That's cause and effect. If you want to have a controlled wet and wet line, don't dab. Don't put the brush and lift it, right? But that's a very specific case. That's something you hear once, you understand it, 
And then you never think about, oh, how does this play into what I'm doing? How does this, how can I incorporate that little tip? How can I take this advice, put it in my pocket and use it for a rainy day? That's not how it's gonna happen. Again, if your purpose is that true, full, complete originality, true freedom, joy, making your own complete original thing, you're not gonna find it there, okay? So my hope to, to, for myself is that I am able to, it's not even hope, you know, I think, I'll, uh, I think it'll just happen. The thing I will be doing is providing you with the minimal, lightest touch when it comes to how-tos, okay? Keep it very basic. That's physics. That's how things work. Or alternatively, that's a way that I discovered that worked really well for me without ever telling you this is how you do it, that's how you do it. One of the worst things you can do is blah, blah, blah. One of the best things you can do for your watercolor results is blah, blah, blah. You know, these things, they're not, if you're really, really serious, they're not gonna work. Now, if you're just a hobbyist, if you're just, you just wanna enjoy it, you know, it's funny, because in watercolor, I am like the most serious person ever. In Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I was, because I'm not, that, I don't know if I'm gonna return to it, but I was a full hobbyist. I was well aware of it. I'm not trying to compete. I'm not trying to beat anyone else. All I wanna do is to learn how to better control my body and learn some self-defense. But it was never my goal to become uh, a prodigy in that. And in many other things, you know, look at the guitar here, barely play it, right? So it really, it's, it's, fully okay to just be a hobbyist and just paint based on other people's tutorials. It's okay to do both. It's okay to do none. There is no right or wrong. <laughs> Burn your books. Don't listen to any advice. So that's kind of uh, my two cents about these types of questions. Okay. And this also applies to criticism. As I mentioned, if you share your art and you get criticism, remember that everyone else is essentially stupider, <laughs> dumber than you, because they did not make the piece, okay? So everything you hear out of their mouth is just going to be criticism and their own perspective and a blind perspective that has nothing to do with you, because I would argue that you can paint a piece that is a masterpiece that no one likes, but you know that the way you created it, the way you, the process went and everything went, it was completely following your own vision, fully. Now, it doesn't mean the art piece will work, but will, will work, will sell, but does it even matter, you know? A couple of things to think about. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the last topic. This is a question I saw now that was asked quite a while ago, about two months or something like that. Why do I paint? You know, someone asked me, why do you paint? Um, it's an interesting question. You know, I could give a lot of reasons. I could give a lot of surface level reasons because I enjoy it, because that's kind of a career path I chose. Um, because as soon as I started my free life after the military service, after all of that, after school, I knew that I enjoy teaching. I knew that I enjoy art. I wanted to combine these two passions. I can give you all of these reasons, but you know what? Only in retrospect can you actually connect the dots and see what is truly there. And my answer to you today would be, why do I paint? Because I can't help but paint. There's nothing else I can do. When, when I sit down and I have nothing to do, nothing to do, right? I work, I finish some stuff. That's my default. That's the thing I just end up doing. That's the thing when I don't think about what I should do, I do. So it's almost like breathing in a way. Um, I wouldn't say I depend on it like breathing, but I'll just say that's my default state, you know? Ever since I was young, I just enjoyed it, painting and drawing, right? Drawing is in the same vein, exact same vein for me. If I have a piece of paper and a pen, I'm going to doodle. You know, if I'm on a phone call, I'm going to doodle. I'm going to draw. I'm going to sketch. I'm going to do these weird three-dimensional shapes. If I have everything here set up, I'll just paint, you know. That I'll just explore. I'll just do it. It's something I can't help myself, just like a writer can't help but writing, just like a philosopher can't help but thinking and analyzing. I can't stop myself from painting. It's the one thing that has always been there. 
So when I look back, it is the one thing that it's that constant line through everything, through line. It's that thing that I was always, you know, doing. It doesn't matter the purpose. It doesn't matter if I do it as a career, as a hobby for myself to sell, to teach. I can't help myself, you know. And it's not that you should not be able to help yourself again. Back to the idea of, you know, hobbies and all of that. That's just it, you know. Maybe you have a job or profession that you really enjoy. You just... It's, it's the path of least resistance in a way, you know? It's just following the path of least resistance where everything else goes away. That's the thing that's left. I want to paint. Um, it's the easiest thing for me to do. So whenever I hear people, you know, challenged to create uh, or being, uh, you know, running into challenges, having no motivation, having no inspiration, uh, procrastinating on that, um, you know, spending hours trying to figure out what reference they should paint and then end up not painting anything. Um, when I hear all of that, I get it, right? It's it's natural. It's things that people go to, through. I just, it's not me, you know? I, I never, ever had that. I'm not sure why. And it's not it's not good to not have that, right? It's not bad that you procrastinate. It's not, it, it just may not achieve the thing that you think you want, right? Because you think you want to create, but then you end up not creating. I think if, if anything I learned is, you know, if you really observe what someone's doing most of the time, you'll, you'll understand what they truly want, you know? Um, if someone is spending all day long working like crazy, by the way, that I fall into that category too sometimes. Um, they're working. They want to work. They want to maybe... Uh, maybe become a success, right? Or make a lot of money, whatever it is. That's, you know, behavior, actions speak louder than words. And that is a true statement. Um, people can tell you many things, but at the end of the day, if you put a camera on them 24-7, they will tell you what they want. And if even if they say they want something else, so if I put a camera on you and you tell me I'm dying to create, I want to create, right? I put a camera on you and I find that you spend all of your time looking at videos, looking at, you know, looking at photos you took or reference photos or potential painting subjects. And all you do for a week or two weeks or, or a month or a year, right? The, the longer time you have, the more accurate of an answer you'll get. All you're doing is that. You never once paint. You don't want to paint. Or you want to paint, but there's something else you want much more than painting. Much more than that. That could be preserving a perception of yourself as whatever. It could be many things, right? I'm, I can't tell you what it is. But I would argue, again, if you observe someone, they will tell you what they want. They will tell you by their actions, not by, they, by their, their words. So whatever that may spark in you, again, this isn't advice. It's not me telling you uh, don't procrastinate. That is so silly. Okay, don't procrastinate. Will it work for anyone? Will anyone hear these words? and then stop procrastinating, I highly doubt it. Now, people can get inspired, right? If, if someone's, you know, it's their first time they decide, oh, I want to see if anyone's painting on YouTube. They've never visited the art niche. They end up in one of my videos, they see me paint, and boom, inspiration strikes. And then they understand, that's something I really want to try. That can happen, you know? That can, you can become inspired to do something, you do it, you find that it's for you, you find that it works, and then you're just set, right? Um, but very often, it's just... It's, it's very hard to force people to do a thing they don't want to do. That's the bottom line. Most of the time, the things you don't do are the things you don't want to do. The things that you do spend all day doing is the things you want to be doing. And that could be in a mask of, I want to waste time, by the way. It can be a lot of things. Again, I'm not going to be able to tell. But just my two cents, you know, back to the question, why do I paint? I just, that's, <laughs> that's the only thing I know. You know, I can't help but paint. I sit down and paint. I want to paint. I want to sketch. I want to doodle. I want to do all these things. I enjoy the interaction of brush, pencil, pen on paper. It's as natural as it gets for me. Um, so yeah, I don't know what this video will provide. I hope it's a good alternative to the live stream, which once again, unfortunately, I couldn't do today because I have some errands to do. We have a lot of things to get prepared for Vietnam. Um, 
but yeah, uh, I talked a bit about personal update, the knee stuff. And by the way, if this is, is a premiere and you're joining late, you know, you, you can listen back after it's done. Um, the knee, the um, uh, recent paintings I shared with you that some will go on auction. Some questions I get asked with the nature of how to improve one's technique, how to paint better, how to improve, how to help one's results. And then why do I paint? Um, honestly, I don't try to imprint or impress anything upon you. Uh, you know, whatever this awakens in people, I try to really have a gentle hand. I don't want to influence too many people. Um, I want maybe to inspire those who want to be inspired or are looking for inspiration. Uh, but at the very least, maybe this was enjoyable, right? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know in a comment. I am really curious to hear what you think of some of the things we discussed here. Um, so definitely leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. Does this sound like nonsense to you? I'm actually curious to hear. Does something resonate with you? Do, does everything resonate with you? Do you feel like this is just putting words to something you knew was right and, and works for you, but you just never really heard it that way? I won't be presumptuous to assume that that's the case, uh, but just throwing the option out there. And yeah, this is it. I'm going to thank you so, so much. If you have any questions, uh, leave them below. You know, I look at all the questions and sometimes they uh, get replied immediately. Sometimes they get replied a week or two after. And sometimes they find their way into a video three months later. Uh, so thank you so, so much. Really do appreciate it. I will thank everyone who supports my work over on Patreon. Really do appreciate it. If you want to get credits at the end of the videos, you can check that out. Link in the description. We'll talk to you again real soon. Hopefully there will be a video on Saturday. Not sure, but hopefully there will be. Uh, and that's it. Take care. Until next time.